So I just want to introduce Noreen Newell, um, and it's very exciting that we're going to hear it from the horse's mouth, the stories of World War II. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being willing to share your stories well, with us. Well, thank you so much. I wish yeah. I didn't have to live it, but I did. Right. And I was blessed to come out of it. All right. Well, thank okay. you so much. So here we go. September was a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. It was about four o'clock and I was jumping road out, outside my, I lived in a development with just uh, side by each houses that were very, very pretty red brick and the government owned them. And we had a big family. I had one brother and four sisters, my mom and dad. My dad was a stevedore, dock worker, so had a lot to do. He was a special person getting the ships out to the troops. And uh, so I was outside jumping and I looked up at the sky and there was a huge barrage balloon. I'd never seen it before. Oh, and by the way, Neville Chamberlain was the prime minister then. Not that anybody probably heard of Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> so we saw that and I ran in and I said, Mom, what is this? And she said, uh, let's see. Um, well, I said, what is that big thing? She says, it's a bar barrage balloon. And I ran in the house and then she said, we are now at war with Germany. So we put, first of all, it started out uh, tape on all your windows, you know, mask, but a, a very hard masking tape. Uh, black fabric that they handed out to us to put on your drapes. You could not have one crack of light going out. That was that for the house, uh, let's see, uh, draperies. Street lights were shut off. You couldn't find your way out at all. Everything was just black. Okay, and let's see, always dark. Uh, the, we had an air raid warden, and he was the nicest old man. And he used to go to my mother's house because she'd make him a cup of tea. And so that's what he loved. And he, I mean, I, he must have been in his 70s. I mean, what could the poor man do if we, you know, were in dire straits? But he was the, he was the best. So let's see, uh, he checked on us. Uh, we were... Uh, Issued gas masks, okay. Children, Mickey Mouse ones, with the Mickey Mouse ears, with the big thing here. And then we had to take them to school. With, with the, they gave us a little plastic bag, and that's what we did. And if there was an air raid, we'd have to have the gas masks beside us, because they did use a lot of gas in those days. Okay, well, let's see, um, uh, let's see. They built an air raid shelter in the backyard. Now, if any of you have ever been to England, you know it's a wet climate. Okay, <laughs> so we've got this hole. It's only about uh, three by five, and it's cement. And they came and they put it in, and then we've got this um, corrugated steel. They put that over it and then put the dirt that they took and put it there. Well, we lived at the bottom of the street, the road, excuse me. And uh, naturally when it rained, guess what? It got filled with water all the time. So it was never used. We never, never used it. So anyway, my mother being the lady that she was, decided to, let's see, we've got that there. Okay, she decided to bring a double bed down in the living room. Now the living room was as big as this corner, okay? So you've got a double bed there. And every night the Germans bombed us. Without fail, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. And if we were in bed in the winter, we'd have to come down, go under the bed, and they would bomb us till, God, two or three in the morning. We bombed during the day. So the sad thing is we never missed school because, we, we, you know, we went to school. It was just wonderful for, for them. Okay, now let's see, where are we? Okay. Uh, uh, oh, okay, when we were in the basement, I mean, the, the air raid shelter once, it was very terrifying. And so my mom had an old biscuit tin 
and she used to put pennies in it. And she used to, we used to rattle it and say, Hitler, go hell, go to hell. And that's what we, you know, we were so busy passing the tin around that we didn't think that we might not make it. So that was, it, 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 it were tough, tough times. And it was cold, it was terrible. Okay, the bread was brought down to the living area. Okay, you know, it was brutal. And let's see, we were bombed every night, every night. Uh, we slept under the bed, and uh, one night, my mom, my dad was a special, uh, he was an essential worker on the docks, getting the ships out to the people, the, the military. So we didn't get to see much of dad, and my dad was one of the nicest, gentlest, wonderful men. Uh, I hated when I had to leave, but we were, we were blessed. They came over here, I've been back many times. So anyway, let's see, where was I? Okay, so mom said, I'm gonna give you a treat. We're gonna have fish and chips from the chippy. Well, oh my God, there's nothing like English. Has anybody ever had fish and chips from the chippy? Yes, are they good? So she said to us little ones, set the table, which was as big as this area, which didn't take much, and she and Mary went. And it was safe from here to the, um, the drugstore over there. And mom stayed in the doorway the, across the street in the, the candy shop and gave Mary a note with so many fish, so many chips, you know, peas, the whole thing. Mary came out. We were home from here to, like I say, there. Mom took Mary's hand. She was 14, I think. And they turned to walk away. And they had walked only a few yards. And the chip shop had a direct hit. They lost about, well, there was a house next door to it, one on the other. It, it, it was a mess, the whole thing. There must have been 10, 12 people killed. So that was one of the major things that was so hard on us. It was, and then of course we lived with the, the mess and the, it was ju just awful. Okay, let's see. So let's see, uh, let's see, uh, okay. One night, okay, we went to visit my aunt Ellen in Liverpool. Now, she ran pubs all her life. She was very successful, because the English loved their pubs. And so, anyway, we went to Auntie Ellen's. We were safe during the day. And of course, you've heard the song from the Beatles, Ferry Cross the Mersey. That's how you got to Liverpool, on the ferry boat. So we got on the ferry boat, went to Auntie Ellen's, had a wonderful time with her and Uncle Bill. There were five of us, she had four. Uh, I don't remember what the heck we ate, but you know, there was always something. Anyway, we're coming back on the trams. Remember the old trams that had the, uh, maybe I'm older than all of you people. <laughs> they had the thing, you know, the tram thing. So we're there and we left early to get home. But the Germans decided to bomb a little early that night. So we're on the ferry boat in the middle of the Mersey River, you know, ferry across the Mersey balloons all in the sky, flaming, raining down all of this fire on us. For some reason, they didn't hit the boat. We got to the other side, Birkenhead. Liverpool is there, Birkenhead is here, the Mersey is there. And my aunt ran a, uh, well, didn't own it, but a like a bakery, but the only thing you could get was bread because there was a war going on. So we got off the boat and we went doorway to doorway to doorway. We were little people. And you know, my sister was about three. And uh, we finally got to my aunt's place and we slept on the floor. They continued going and going. Left, got home. We only, it was just a short walk, say from here to my house. And uh, we went to bed. I got up for school the next morning. That's what you did. You went to school. Oh, and let me tell you, when we went to school, <laughs> okay, this was not like living today in this country. 
children were hungry and we had a lot of head lice. Does anybody know what head lice are? Mm-hmm. Well, believe me, we had nurses come in and you could see them walking on your, I mean, it was just, you young people have no idea what it's like. So anyway, they would come and every Friday, my mother had this Vaseline stuff. It was called Harrison's Pomade. And it used to itch the hell out of you, you know. And so Friday nights, we were covered the roots to get, because my mother was very clean. Oh, she was raised in a convent, so, you know. So anyway, that's what she'd do. We had that, and let's see. Uh, so, oh, one night, my godmother, Aunt Nora, who I'm named after, Noreen means little Nora in Gaelic, by the way, if anybody wants to know. And uh, she was my favorite. She's been here to visit. She was great. So Aunt Nora, was out. She lived, say from here to the, just further than the town hall from us. Uncle Tom was serving in Germany. She had four children. And she was looking across the River Mersey. And there was Liverpool on the other side. And she saw a parachute coming down. This was like four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon. So some premonition she decided to get the children into the house, and she hollered to her neighbors, go, go in the house. She, we had clawfoot bathtubs in those days, you probably don't know it, but uh, she pushed her four children under there and between the toilet and the back wall. The whole estate was blown to pieces, and the only thing left standing was Aunt Nora's bathroom. So, Aunt Nora moved in with us, with four kids. We had five in the tiniest house you've ever seen. So there were nine of us. Um, I don't think we had a dry bed through the war years at all because of the nerves from the children. And uh, it was, and poor Aunt Nora, once she got over her shock, you know, it was, it's just horrific, horrific. So let's see. We had 12 people. We were five, six to a bed, up and down. Okay, rationing. Our main diet was rabbit from the field. Now they're, to me, vermin, but my mother fixed a good rabbit stew. She was really good at that. Okay, let's see. Oh, and we had a fishmonger come around because we lived on a peninsula. Three, the, 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 there was the River Dee, the River Mersey, the Irish Sea and the Atlantic. So we were, I've got a, a picture here to show you. Okay, let's see. Uh, 12 people, okay, we ate rabbit. Oh, we couldn't get toilet paper. Now, you know that's a major problem, but we could get newspapers. So every Friday after we had our nets and lice removed from our heads, we were told to cut pieces of newspaper that big and we threaded it on a piece of string and took it into the outside toilet. It wasn't clean to have a toilet inside, okay? So that's what last us the, you know, the whole time. Mom, I remember one night, it was cold. There were lots of cold, cold nights. And she was the best mom, she was the best. Dad wasn't there, God love him. He was getting the ships out and they were blowing them to pieces out in the Irish Sea. And so uh, anyway, she, she was in the living room and I saw the tears just coming down. She never showed any emotion, but she was breaking her furniture up, chairs, desk to keep us warm. And we all had, does anybody know what chillblains are on your feet? You do? Yeah. You, you're so cold, you sit so close to the fire and it gets hot and then it makes bumps and they're itchy and they're, they're awful. So we had chillblains. And let's see, let's see. Uh, like I said, dad was a stevedore and never home. Once in a while, dad, if there was some stuff like oranges, which we never knew what the hell an orange was, uh, if a crate would break open, <laughs> he'd bring three or four home 
which was not very legal, but my mum and dad would bring the neighborhood kids in and we'd have like an eighth of a piece of orange. Everybody shared everything. I mean, you couldn't have got nicer people in World War II. They were just unbelievable. So let's see, okay. And the last part, oh, my mother, she had a job. Now, I know uh, Al Moran's not here, but we couldn't get undertakers, okay? So they'd call Mrs. Allen, Maggie they called her. Maggie, so-and-so died. They would drop, a sh everything was a shroud. There was no makeup, there was no, uh, if you've ever seen a body that had no work done, it's not a pretty sight. So my poor mom, she'd be feeding us, gotta go, wash the body, they would bring the, uh, the stand and the, sm the caskets were much, much smaller than here. And so the, the person would come and the, he would put the person in there. Now my aunt was a politician. She was the mayoress of Birkenhead. It, it wasn't a voting position. You, you served a year and then somebody else would serve a year and somebody else. And so she had this um, wake at her house. And I'll never forget it. I think I was about uh, 14 and we went to the house and you walk around and somebody stands at the back of the casket with a white linen handkerchief. And he says, do you, do you want to view the body? <laughs> you should say no, okay, no, <laughs> no, no. But of course some do. Uh, let's n not go there, okay. And then we bring the body to the church and then the funeral will be the next day. So uh, that was, uh, okay, let's see. Let's see, uh, she, she did, did that for, and never got paid for it. Never, 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 she was an angel. The war went on for four years and it was over on, in April 45 and rationing still went on. An ounce of butter per, per if, if they had butter, uh, lard, they didn't have shortening in those days, it was lard. Uh, sugar, tea, uh, no refrigeration anywhere. You got your bacon, it was, you know, we never had a refrigerator in our house. I mean, whoever did? No washing machine. In fact, we bought my mom, when Jerry and I were married, we bought her a washing machine for Christmas. And guess what? She started taking in laundry from the neighbors. <laughs> Gotta come see this, what my daughter bought us. And she do. And then they would take it home and dry it on their clotheslines. She was so thrilled. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then we had the nurse go around the schools. Now, my name is Nora, okay, baptized. And this nurse used to come around, and we used to call her Nitty Nora. <laughs> looking for the nits and the head lice in your head. So I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. Okay, so we used this stuff, Harrison's pomade. Then my dad decided we didn't have enough food, so we're gonna get some chickens. Oh God, naturally he wasn't around, okay? So uh, we had them roaming, just roaming. You know, and then we never saw it, but one night dad would go out and, you know, and we had chicken. It was good. <laughs> it was good. And uh, then the war got, oh, oh, we all, I told you they had black curtains, okay. Aunt Nora, uh, Auntie Ellen, uh, you have no idea. You, you, you have no idea how bad it was. It's cold. I remember the cold. I remember chill lanes on my feet. Um, it was just awful. And I hope we never, never have a war again. Well, it wouldn't be like that because with all the weapons we have nowadays. But uh, my cousin Jackie, he was over in um, Germany. He lost his arm and it was so far, shot so far off, he could never be fitted with a prosthesis. It was just, God love him. He didn't live too long after that, maybe in his 30s. So that was that. And there were no men around. They were all in the military. And, um, and that's it. 
Uh, any questions for anybody? What about nanny and granddad when they brought the children out of the orphanage? Okay, well, this is before my, this is a little story about my family, okay? Uh, my mom, uh, my, my grandmother, her name was Catherine, my daughter's named after her, and my grandfather was named Bernard. Well, my, uh, Bernard was fighting in the trenches in World War I. We're going back now, okay? And so grandma was pregnant. Well, she died in childbirth with the baby. And they sent my grandfather home to bury her. So my uncle Johnny Reynolds, he had nine children, but he was quite a philanthropist. He's got glass windows in the churches over there. He was a very good man. This was my grandmother's brother. So anyway, uh, Uncle Johnny put them in an orphanage in, oh no, he came home to bury his wife, went back and then was killed. I told you that, didn't I? So then Uncle Johnny put the children in a Catholic orphanage. Now, it wasn't much fun. The nuns in those days were not nice. So Auntie Ellen, she was kind of the redhead in the family, not red, but she was walking by one of the classrooms. She was five, six. She saw herself and she thought, oh, you look pretty cute. <laughs> the nuns saw it and shaved her head. So they, they lived there for years. And then mom and dad got married. They had a mass, just the two of them with the two people, you know, the witnesses. They took a bus and went to Wales and started their wedding night with four children. My uncle Arthur, who was the only boy, was raised by somebody, relatives in Leeds, which is uh, to the west of us. So they, we did get to see Uncle Arthur, but not too, too much, you know. But anyway, she married them all off, and uh, they were just the greatest people ever. Anything else, Kath, or? How'd you meet Dad? Yeah, how'd you meet Jim? Ah, in a <laughs> pub, in a pub, an English pub, where else? Oh, I thought he was dishy, you know, so yeah. So we met him in a pub, and he was going out with a girl, girl named Kitty. So, uh, but he liked me the minute he saw me. <laughs> what the hell? So uh, anyway, he uh, came in the pub. We used to go to a dance. It was called the, uh, oh, I forget the name of the, the place, but it, dancing was a big thing in England. You know, ballroom dancing. Your, your grandfather? Oh, God, no. <laughs> Are you kidding? He was terrible. We tried to just... <laughs> he had no rhythm whatsoever, and yet he was in the school band, darling. Yeah, I don't know where he thought he had rhythm, but he didn't, God rest him. So, uh, anyway, then he was in the pub, and of course he was in his uniform because his uh, clothes had not arrived over to England. So he looked pretty dishy. Okay, so uh, we went to the dance and then he walked me to the train. And then my sister, Kitty, was getting married. And I'd, been, I'd seen him about four times. And so I said, I better tell my mom, because we were very honest. So I says, Mom, I've met this young man and he's American. And she says, well, bring the bugger home and let's have a look at him. <laughs> so. He came to the wedding, and he had him and his friend, Jim, and he had sheets wrapped in newspaper, and it was hilarious. So with the, the reception was in Lourdes Hall. In those days, it's not like the weddings of today. You know, we just went to, so my dad says, come on, son, let's go downstairs and have a beer. And that was it. We, we went together all those years, and never anybody else, just us. And loved all of my family. And, uh, oh, and I gotta tell you about my brother-in-law. Right now, Roger and Catherine, they have a very, uh, they own two nursing homes. And they're just, they've been here. And uh, he used to sleep with his sister in a bed with the father's heavy wool coat over, and they'd each have a leg in 
the sleeve to keep warm. That's how poor things were in those days. It, it, you, America has no idea how bad it was. Toothpaste, we used uh, baking soda, okay? And uh, we lived near Lever Brothers, and you just get soap. The bar of soap was that big. You used it for floors, your face, ev your hair, everything. You just couldn't, no such thing as shampoo or, you know, it was awful. And you, oh, shoes. At my two feet, the middle, they're bent like this because you had to wear shoes that were handed down. You know, they, you couldn't buy shoes, couldn't buy anything. So I'm, I hope we never have a war. Well, of course, this, this, it wouldn't last like this did. Any other questions? How did you celebrate holidays? Well, there wasn't much food, but we did celebrate, yes. Uh, in a tiny house, we'd have a chicken, you know, and that was it. We always went to Mass, a very Catholic family, always, always. Uh, and uh, the school, of course, in those days, you had to go to educated Catholic, too. There was no choice. Uh, so I was raised in a Catholic school and a Catholic church. And uh, what? What about Boxing Day? What do people know about Boxing Day? How big it is? Oh, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas in England. And what they do, they have a big box at the back of the church. And when you go in from, they never had envelopes in those days. You know, you, you put it in yourself. But they always had this box for the poor. And that's where the name Boxing Day comes from. The priest would open that and distribute it or buy food for the poor. Because there was no such thing as uh, free anything in those days. I mean, we were lucky to be alive, let alone, you know, it was awful. Okay, any other questions? Your dad worked on the docks in Liverpool? Yeah, and Birkenhead. Okay, so when, when Dunkirk Group. Yeah. Did he see all the ships go out to get the boys oh, yeah. to come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah he so did. Be he got all of them, and a lot of them were also, we had a lot of submarines in the Irish Sea. In fact, I've got, it's a peninsula, see? Well, here, oh, okay. we've got the, uh, okay, the River D here. This is the uh, Atlantic, and this is the River Mersey. But this was uh, the, uh, the Irish Sea here. But the ships would go out. Here's Liverpool, and here's where I lived here. It's just a little peninsula, very pretty. And th the German submarines were vicious. We lost many, many ships. Any other questions? Your first impression when you came over to the States? How big everything was, you know. I mean, my God, you, you have bathrooms that are as big as my living room. I mean, it was just, and so much food. Uh, uh, February 28th of 1954. I remember that. Yeah, we flew with Grampy. Yeah, and then we were sent down to um, MacDill Air Force Base for three months and then came here and raised my family and got you. <laughs> this is my granddaughter, and guess what? It's her birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord. What did Spencer feel like to you when you came? I know you know both of my parents. Well, you know, I was so young, and, and I, I love Spencer, but. I was lonesome because I'd left a brother and four sisters and it was, and of course I was pregnant by them and heaving my guts out. So uh, it was not a very, you know, but I've got to love it, just love it. But you know, you're away from home. You can't pick up the phone and call your girl. Well, we didn't have a phone. Uh, so but you can't, I had nobody, you know, just my husband and he was the best. Was Joe your uh, well, Amherst, his family, um, his uncle did most of the printing for the uh, Amherst University and stuff out there. So he used to go out there as a young boy and work. But uh, his mother, I think, came from near Boston. But his dad was definitely Amherst out that way. 
So he grew up in Spencer, yeah. So is that it? Thank you. You were great.